hello students how are you all i hope all of you are fine and i also hope that all of you are using this time the ample of time that all of us are getting right now to make some progress in your life and character well moving ahead with today's uh, topic for the video uh, today i'm going to discuss the chapter deep water which is the third chapter of your textbook flamingo is the textbook that i'm carrying and i'm going to be using it for the reference which is here with me and this particular chapter is actually an autobiographical account by the writer called william douglas now william douglas's life and uh, his works his achievements have been given by me to you in, in a very detailed form in the ppt that i had just posted in the group i hope all of you have been through it if you have not please go through it so that you can know about his life uh, in short i would just like to say that he was uh, the longest serving uh, legal official um, in the history of us and he had worked with uh, uh, with uh, the president roosevelt's time he has been working along with him and he was uh, personally chosen by president roosevelt uh, as the justice chief justice of uh, uh, of usa and he worked for the longest time period uh that every judge could ever serve uh you can get more information about him it's been there on the first page of the chapter itself or a, a very basic search a very basic google search will also give you the desired result but importantly here uh, we have to discuss talk about the content of the chapter which deals basically about his experiences douglas's experiences of learning uh, swimming Uh, so when you uh, look at the chapter it begins with uh, young douglas who was approximately at that time 12 to 13 year old he wanted to learn swimming and he has chosen a place called ymca swimming pool uh, this uh, ymca is basically a young men christian association and this is a kind of institutions where variety of vocational courses are generally taught to this to men specifically and its counterpart institution is y uh wca young women uh, christian association which is again has the same agenda of uh, uh, you know making them aware or making them acquainted with a variety of vocational courses it could be a shorthand it could be typing it could be many other vocational courses which are this vocational skills which are instilled in these students so we're talking about a time when there was this institution where you know there was a swimming pool and william douglas decides to learn swimming over there because it's considered to be safe and obviously learning swimming in a swimming pool is much more convenient and safer than learning it directly into a river or a pond or in any other water body and uh, this was uh, because uh, you know uh, it it the chapter then begins with uh, his memory going in past wherein when he was 3 or 4 years old he had a bad experience of being swept away with the water when he was surfing with his father in the river in california so that experience had actually set in a fear in his mind and uh, you know he wanted to get over this fear that's why he decides to learn to swim in ymca swimming pool so here is this one fine day he decides to go there and uh, uh the swimming pool is designed such that on one side its length is 3 feet but on another side its depth is approximately 9 feet so he thought that probably he would uh, be able to swim over there um, in a much better way so as he was just about to move into the water there is this young boy uh, another young boy who just uh, you know kind of pushes him inside the water uh, you can imagine this man is just this young man is just a very uh, uh, kind of those people you know who just have fun with other one and without actually realizing the consequences of it so he is not one of those good person but you know those kind of uh, friends you would have been in your classes you know who just keep on making fun of others just for the sake of having fun so this is what is done to douglas also that he's actually been uh, pushed into the water by this yet another young man and douglas who had no experience of swimming actually is just is just moving inside the water when the water if you do not have any experience of swimming and inside the water actually the pressure that water uh, puts on your body is just too much because you're not acquainted with dealing with that pressure first of all and secondly you just do not know what to do because you have never stayed in a state where you cannot uh, 
breathe properly or you have to undergo a very controlled breathing and this is exactly what is happening with the douglas's body also so he does not know what to do at this time he was confused but then he comes up with his a strategy of just going down into the pool and pushing him against the floor of the pool and then trying to come up okay this is what his mind tells him and he tries to do something else so he says just wait that till he's going to go inside the pool as he's trying to push himself away he does it but then the force is not enough to get him to on the surface and so he he kind of comes only uh, he comes up only up to a certain level then he starts going down once again and once again he feels that he is going to do the same strategy is going to follow the same strategy he will push himself against the wall against the floor of the uh, swimming pool and then he is going to come up on the surface like a cock but uh, once again that doesn't happen and uh, he starts moving inside and for the last time he try once again and he is able to come up but only half of his face is above the water surface which is approximately up till mouth probably or up till nose he is able to come up and then he starts moving inside and by this time he is really exhausted there have been you must understand all this had happened only for few seconds because more than that the human body cannot survive until it has learned itself to survive under water or it has it knows some techniques which the professional swimmers know they can you know stay inside the water for uh, for a very long period of time but a normal person like me who has never swam who has never known how to swim will not be able to survive under water for more than few seconds and these few seconds are really really short time right so similar experience is going to happen is is happening with douglas also and he's not able to come up and by this the third time probably he's extremely exhausted and doesn't know what to do and uh, he tries to come up but then all he ends up doing is to inhale a lot of water i mean intake a lot of water and uh, then he his his body and his mind kind of surrenders and he's not able to come up on the water so by this time he is a totally tired and uh, he decides to surrender and uh, uh, he's not able to breathe and he realizes that actually he's going to die and after this uh, short struggle that he's placed uh, wherein he has exhausted a lot of his mental and his physical energy there comes a peace over him and he's crossing to oblivion so oblivion is a state where where uh, you know nothing is visible it, it's a place which is unknown Uh, which has n- not been acquainted by that particular person so uh, but then there is peace in this particular state and there is no more struggle there is no exhaustion there is no desire to live and he is just uh, it is as if he is crossing over to that to that place or to that space where he is completely new and unfamiliar with but then there is a certain level of peace and there is a certain level of calm and comfort over here and you know the way he describes it you see that he's actually dying it's a state where he's moving from life towards death and he feels that this particular state at that time was so comforting as if he was just lying in the lap of his mother like uh, you the lap of your mother that is the most comfortable and the most peaceful and the most secure place in the world isn't it Oh, he feels that so he was just about to accept his death when somebody actually pushes him up and uh, takes him out um uh, or and uh, then he's being put on the floor and then somebody is pumping water from his body and he's just vomiting water and then he realizes that somebody a young man just had a prank on him now this particular experience once again had a very deep effect on his psychology and he got so very uh, seriously and you know deeply scared of water and which is quite a normal uh, you know experience anybody who is going through such experience or uh, anybody who would go through a, such an unpleasant experience is not going to have a good or a pleasant memory of the experience so he decides never to go for a swimming again but the fear in his mind has not killed his love for water activities okay so since he he has decided simply because of his fear he has decided never to go back into the water he realizes that he has started missing a lot of the water activities like surfing like swimming like diving like canoeing there is variety of water activities one can only do if that person is properly acquainted with swimming now uh, he decides to once again he is deciding to uh, you know to to overcome this fear of swimming and how does he do it this time he takes help of a professional uh, trainer so when you uh, read the chapter uh, move on to page number move on to page number 
28 when you go to page number 28 there is this long paragraph in fact whole of the page is filled up with the efforts that he places to learn the swimming and how he said that step by step day by day and activity by activity this particular that william douglas basically learns to swim and he understands you know that there is one the one stage when a rope is attached to a belt and this rope is actually uh, it's been held in his waist and then he's swimming so you can imagine why this particular rope is around his waist because uh, so that he doesn't get you know swept away with the water and he doesn't uh, start drowning Uh, so this is how you know slowly and steadily he works on his fear and he starts uh, mastering the art of swimming and slowly and steadily um uh, he learns to swim and uh, then there is a time when the trainer completes his training now everything depends upon his practicing and he decides to practice and he practices a lot and he realizes that there were still the residual doubts in his mind and he was still under some very basic form of terror and very basic form of fear of water but then he by practicing he's able to overcome it this is just the story of william douglas you must understand that william douglas is relating one incident of his life with you and he is trying to tell you about how he said that you know the common conditions of your life certain experiences of your life can form can make or can break a big part of psychology human psychology is such that it gets constructed or it get made by the experiences that we offer to ourselves okay so often you would have seen you know there is a people who are very confident actually if you if you find people if you come across people who are very confident who are very manipulative and who are also very uh, very outspoken or who are very daring actually these are those people who would have put themselves in very uncomfortable situations situations actually you can never gain confidence you can never gain uh, uh, the the vision of uh, you know pushing your put in uh, limits until you actually go through the bad experiences of life these experiences not not just always good uh, the bad experiences are good teachers actually they teach you a lot they teach you a lot because they tell you or they they they, they flip the life or they flip the coin of life and they tell you that if there is success then at the same time there are failures and when you go through failures you know that you know the wrongs that you have committed during the act and you know that in order to overcome that failure you have to actually learn to uh, you know master some of the skills so you would start mastering those skills only when you dis- when you have been through some some really harsh experiences but then as a by product of getting yourself into the harsh condition is also that there is a fear that generally is set in the mind of the human being now the most important crux of this particular chapter is going to be the discussion of the whole concept of fear okay because the story in itself as i told you is about william douglas who had been through some kind of negative experience at the age of 3 or 4 and then once again a negative experience at the age of 12 or 14 when he was learning swimming at at ymca swimming pool and then he learns to swim once again with the help of a professional trainer but then as i told you this the story is very simple there is something so great about the story or something which you need to remember um, you know with great effort but the important point and which is the only point of this particular chapter is how to overcome your fear and what is it that fear actually is about once you look at fear if you analyze fear you must understand this that fear is a very predominant emotion okay if fear wouldn't have been there we actually wouldn't have survived when i'm saying that we wouldn't have survived i'm meaning human beings or homo sapiens as a living species would not have survived actually okay imagine millions and trillions of years back when human beings would have started getting into uh, existence the basic fear within the human mind at that time or whatever form we were we were probably not exactly the homo sapien at that time but whatever the living form we were or it's not just about homo sapiens or human beings it's about any other kind of living species actually the basic fear that had been instilled in the mind of that particular living species is the fear of death so if we did not have that fear of death we will not be Uh, if if you become very easily uh, you know uh, uh, tolerant of the fear of death do you think that any living species is going to survive 
do you not think that if there is no fear for uh, you know death then the living most of the living species would actually extinct because until there is you know if there is no hope or if there is no feeling in me or if there is no love for life in me then obviously the next step is that at a very small disappointment i'm going to kill myself because there is absolutely no fear in me for death so nature has made us in such a manner that we have thrived upon or we have been able to continue our existence for this long on this planet because we have actually had fear in our hearts of death and it continues to be here uh, till date till today okay even till today although we have progressed a lot and we don't really have to uh, you know as a as a living species we don't really have to go to the jungles and hunt for our food because we have made ourselves such a secure societies we have we have constructed ourselves into such complex structured societies that uh, the basic uh, necessities of approximately all the human beings i'm not saying everybody but approximately of all the human beings on the whole planet is getting meted out so it was not as if you know uh, many 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 millions of years ago when we had to think about from where are we going to get the second meal of the day or even the first meal of the day it was very difficult so for us or for any living species the 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 the, the first important thing at that time was somehow to survive right and for that it was very important for us to understand that death was definitely uh, something which we did not want because death would mean um, the extinction of her so that is why two important things were there they had to reproduce regularly at that time and also they had to make themselves or, or they had to keep themselves alive and this happened only because we have we had the fear of death therefore i said that fear is a very predominant uh, emotion that had governed our life and even till today it is governing our life even though we are not in a emergency state of somehow continuing our survival because we have organized ourselves into well structured societies and we have very uh, far better means of living now than at any other time in the human history isn't it we have such improved medical sciences we have so many things around us which help us to survive the difficult conditions these days but this fear has still not moved off our mind you can see you can you know kind of think that fear is something which is into our gene so if you're fearful of something it's all right to be fearful because it's very natural to be fearful as i've told you that fear is very natural and fear has been something which had actually helped us to survive this far and has helped us to come so much uh, ahead because there have been many species who have actually got extinct uh, not because they did not have the fear of uh, death but because uh, they somehow could not uh, you know manage to live uh it could be lack of resources it could be uh, the killings by human um, species it could be anything else it could be any other natural disaster but they have been a species whom we know that have not been able to come this far so being fearful is natural being fearful is normal and being fearful is also genetic probably it's in our genes we have actually come up with that so it is very much inside our genes so, so there's something which is which i'm trying to say that you know you don't really have to feel let down because you feel that you are fearful of something if you're fearful of night if you're fearful of darkness if you're fearful of dogs if you're fearful of failures in your life it is all right it's all right to be fearful it's all right to get scared of something because that's natural and that will that has always governed our lives but what william douglas is trying to say is that it is possible to overcome the fears because beyond the fears basically lie the potential or basically lie the conditions which will help us to improve the potential of a character so if william douglas on that day would have just decided to leave all the water car activities and would have just you know forgot about it he would have never begun such a big swimmer so then let us try to understand what the character of the fear is all about do you think fear is something which has its own identity do you think fear is something which has its own character well the answer is to a very large extent no it does not have a character on its own as i told you in the evolutionary history of any living species on this planet fear has helped us to come up or to you know come up with variety of experiences or with variety of skills to survive 
it is important for us to realize that more you nurture this fear, the greater it becomes in you. Okay. Since there was a fear for the people to live, they came up with variety of skills to overcome that fear. They had a fear of death. That is why now they knew that getting food was extremely important for them. But how to get food? Think about those days when fire was still not invented. But then the people would still be hungry and they would need food. So hunting was one option. But then how to hunt an animal which was much more greater in speed and ferocity and in strength by human beings. How did they deal with it? They came up with various kinds of weapons, isn't it? It was fear basically of their life and for their life which helped them to become very good hunters, which helped them to kill the animals which were of many many fold you know greater than their own strength a human being can actually hunt an elephant isn't it whereas the, the strength of an elephant as compared to a human being is just enormous we is have absolutely no strength as you you know kind of if we start comparing ourselves to a blue whale but then a human being can in fact hunt and keep a blue whale also captive right so fear helped them to come up with learning of variety of skills which helped them to survive similarly in this particular story also or in this part you know in our normal lives also when fear happens what happens is that one must learn to overcome it by gaining new skills hmm? because fear as i told you is just a thought it begins with a thought and thought has no value until you start nurturing it every day if you start feeding it if you start giving it the power it demands by giving it time and you know various other thoughts then it starts gaining power and when it starts gaining power the fear gets power only with the kind of thoughts you're providing it so if you're producing many more fearful thoughts in response to just one fearful thought then of course that fear will uh, continue to emerge as a stronger thing and slowly and steadily it gains you know uh, its own uh, character and starts getting command on your character and it will start completely take you uh, it will just take you in its uh, influence so what i'm trying to get at is for example if william if for example let, let let alone william douglas example you you just think about any fear that you have if you have a fear of public speaking if you think that you're not very good at speaking and if you go to the mic and you're going to speak to the public then you might just end up ridiculing yourselves but what is the solution of overcoming if you keep on thinking about what will happen if you fail do you think you are ever able to go to the uh, you would ever be able to go move on to that particular state of getting into a you know um, of, of getting before a mic and speaking to the people no you would never be able to do that so you have to now focus on other aspect of the problem which is how to overcome that particular fear and then you would start you know taking help from your friends from your other good speakers from your teachers your parents your relatives maybe and you start practicing and the more you practice slowly and steadily the fear will start losing its strength and character and it will fade away so this is what the fear is fear is largely a psychological construction it it does not have any physical um, entity to it it has it, it has nothing uh, you know um, th th there is absolutely no physical identity of the fear fear is nothing but as i told you just a thought and and it starts uh, becoming stronger day by day when we start feeding it more power by being more fearful by being more weaker so your weakness gives power to fear okay so it's just that if you're fearful of something and you want to really overcome you have to change your uh, attention from the problem to the possible solution and this is what douglas also does so therefore douglas very famously in this particular chapter says that all we have to fear is fear there is nothing which is fearful in this life in fact he says death is very peaceful he says in death there is absolutely no problem and when you die you die with complete peace now i'm not asking you to experiment it please don't die just to see if there is peace in death or not 
but then he is saying that he's been to that very near death experience no so he knows that it, when a person dies there is actually peacefulness there there is actually a calmness a quietness in death and uh, or contrary to the popular opinion because we feel very fearful of death but then death is peaceful and experience is only when you go near to death or when you go to death right therefore the only fearful thing is just ensure that you're not allowing the idea or the thought of fear into your head if you're able to do that fine i mean you have one half of the battle and if it still enters your head in your head then it's just change your focus change your focus to how i said that you know you can probably um come out of this problem if you have fear of dogs and uh, you feel uh, a fear full of moving uh, alone on streets just because you feel that you know a dog will attack you then you have to start taking help from other people they might accompany you for a certain uh, period of time and then you also start have to start learning the psychology of the dogs and you know that you know dogs uh, get sus- suspicious by looking at your fearful faces they they think that you're going to do something wrong with them and then they, that's why they start barking you barking at you so this is just one example i'm trying to give that this is how you have to you know kind of change your focus from one thing to another and being by the virtue of being human beings we are endowed with immense intellectual capacities to overcome our fears as opposed to many other living species who are not able to do the same thing right we have done that in in our history and we can do it so this is what what he says that actually in death there is peace uh, there is terror only in the fear of death okay so there is terror only in the fear of death so there is terror in the thought that we have created but act in actuality death is very peaceful right so you know that that feeling that oh i might be dead tomorrow oh what will happen if if i um, uh, you know meet uh, with an accident or what will happen if if i get just carried away by death due to any disease or something it actually it it is something which you must understand that death is very peaceful but that whole idea which takes you towards the death is something which is different and something which is difficult and then he says all we have to fear is fear itself so if you want to fear something just fear that that fear should not enter your mind and that's all you have to do you have to just change your focus from fear to the possible solutions as i told you so basically most of the uh, you know questions in this particular chapter would be based upon the character of fear your understanding of the fear and how to deal with your fear basically another questions which 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 is very often asked from this particular chapter is uh, uh what were the efforts that were been placed by Douglas to overcome his fear and i said as i told you on page number 28 there is a long paragraph which deals about variety of uh, efforts that have been placed so you can read it and you can learn and then you can write so the most important crux of this chapter itself is is just the concept of fear so just understand give yourself some more time and think about what fear is so when you sit back and quiet and try to interrogate any one uh, fear that you have in your life and think about why are you actually so fearful of whatever you are fearful of and just think that is it really real is the fear really real most of the time you realize that fear has got nothing in itself it's just you have given it so much magnitude that it has just grown in size and character that is it so try to uh, you know uh, write down something i to think about the character of fear and the ways to improve it uh, i mean the brave ways of overcoming it and then you can get back to me if you still have any problem we can either make one or uh, one more video on it or i can give you some kind of uh, assistance in writing the answers so please do let me know uh, about uh, how was this video if you have liked this video then please do comment and let me know about it and i'll keep on posting more videos on more topics from your textbook and otherwise also thank you so much i hope you have enjoyed this video you have learned something from this video and i hope to see you in my next video thank you